Coping with COVID and In It Together SC present Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina and DHEX Division of Diabetes and Heart Disease Management. Coping, Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor, and uh, every uh, first Wednesday of each month, we have started a series, we did it last month, where we're helping you grow your own fruits and vegetables. It's grow at your home. Now, it has been such a, and we talked about this before, we were Isha Cortman and Joy Price. Isha is with the um, Farmers well, Richland County Master Gardeners Master Association. Master Gardeners, Richland County Master Gardeners Association and joins with the SNAP Ed program at DHEC. And if uh, you joined us last month, um, we talked about the fact that because of COVID, a lot of people really began becoming more and more interested right. in mm-hmm. gardening. I'm gonna put my glasses on too. <laughs> Everybody got the glasses on. Um, yeah, people became more and more interested in gardening. Mm-hmm. And I think people realized one, it wasn't as hard as they thought it right. would be. And there is a difference in food from the grocery store and food coming out of your garden. Homegrown. Homegrown. Yeah. It, it does taste <laughs> better and it lasts longer. It does. And you know what? The interesting thing is, I think you would think the other would last longer because of pesticides and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you don't know how long it's been in the grocery store. You absolutely don't. And then also, how long it took to get there. Right. A lot of our produce comes from Mexico. Mm. Right. That's wow. kind of scary because every trip I've gone to Mexico, the first thing they tell you is don't drink the water. Oh, wow. Right. Oh, my goodness. Right. And it's the same water they're, they're feeding the crops with. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We have different enzymes and whatnot that vary throughout the U.S. too. But in Mexico, they build up a resistance for certain right. antibodies right. that we don't. So that, you know, I talked to a young lady who can't eat tomatoes who says it makes her knees hurt. So there's oh, certain really? certain mm-hmm. fruits and vegetables, mm-hmm. you know, people can't consume because of not just because it's a tomato or a vegetable, but it's probably related to where it's grown yeah. to a certain extent too. There's you know companies who do um, what they call you know well pro- you know vegetable plant based. Mm-hmm. Well, a mushroom one. You said yeah, mm-hmm. the mushroom yeah. one, and then there's another company, compost company actually in Elgin that does. Um, plant-based well not manure but plant-based compost Compost. yeah so what i have i i tried both um two of my bins have chicken and two have cow so i'm trying to see now which one so far the cow manure seems to be thriving for my cucumbers really okay so it may be that some vegetables do better in a certain type Mm -hmm. of manure Mm -hmm. i've never really checked it out but that's something i will check out you know after today and see but I'm real pleased with overall, you know, performance of all the plants so far. They're all thriving and getting enough water. Yeah. But um, with a container garden, the one thing that you really need to remember is, is that you have to water every day, just about. Oh, wow. Especially when it's in this temperature of weather, mm-hmm. because like you see those grow bags. Um, and we'll go over there. And yeah, yeah, they dry out pretty quickly. So I'm having to water every day. Wow. Wow. We're talking to Isha Cartman. She's with the uh, Richland County Master Gardeners Association. Joy Price joins us with the SNAP Ed Department at SCD. I'm Trey Taylor and it's Wellness Wednesday and it together SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. This is part two of our monthly series on growing in your own home. And we are kind of going over what we talked about last month. What else did we talk about, Joy? We also talked about Drop those container gardens, different type of containers. Um, and I just want to say, please reuse, recycle anything you have in your house. Right. There are coffee mugs. canisters, canisters. Okay. coffee mugs, even when you do do coffee mugs, make sure if you don't have anything to drain out, make sure you put a little um, rocks or on the bag underneath. I do that. I cut the top off and just have it catching you know, mm-hmm. water overflow. And that works great. Yeah. So you make sure that you have some type of drainage system installed in the um, So that's just a matter of, um, from, for your point, putting rocks at the bottom of the cup container and then putting the soil or whatever and mm-hmm. then putting, whether it's a seed or a plant. Yeah. And it's, it's, you were saying what 
put the plastic bags the same way or actually under the cup? Actually underneath, um, like if you, let's say you were using a cup, you could put a plastic baggie in there and then put the soil in the baggie. And also from the sweat, that it kind of help keep it moist, moist as well. But um, generally, you really wanna, the best way is to have a container that has a hole in the bottom. And you still would use the rocks because sometimes water will settle in the bottom and not drain totally out. And the rocks help to distribute that water drainage so that you don't get root rot. Because a lot of times you'll be like, well, God, my plant is fine. I've been watering it. And you think that you've over, you haven't over watered it, but you have. And then the plant, because the water can't go anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. And then your, your your roots are rotting because, of, like you said, the water. Wow. Yeah. That's an interesting point because you're right. I mean, they need water, and you're giving them water, and then they're still not doing well. But it's because the water has to drain. It's right. got to go somewhere. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. What else were you saying, Joy? So use what you have. Any kind of container is good. Reuse. 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 Recycle. Um, also, to start your plants, these should be really good egg cartons. Those work wonderful. If you get the paper ones, I guess, the ones that are like potted stock, you can just plot those in the ground. Those are perfect. Just this, yeah, them. they're biodegradable. So, you know, you put your seedling, you know, your seed in there, you put your soil that is moist where mm -hmm. you were to squeeze it, it would be like, it would, the water wouldn't drip out, it would be like a sponge type. Mm -hmm. um, texture to it, and you put that in the cups, put your seed in there, and then within eight, 15 days, you have a little pretty cute little seed mm -hmm. pop up out of the ground. But you're using things that you have, like Joy said, that you have in your own. Right. Mm -hmm. You're right. upcycling what you have, and you're able to use it more than once. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's no need to go out. I mean, if you want to, you know, spend some money and get a bunch of pretty mm -hmm. containers, you mm -hmm. can. But you don't have to. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have to. I've heard a lot of people saying, I'm going to get back to you in a minute, Joy. And both of you can answer this, but we'll get back to the recap because we're talking about containers. I want to mention containers. I've seen a lot online about not using the dollar store containers. Do you, are, or, and do you know anything about that or any um, of those toxic? Like people have you say? Heard? I, I'm, I think any kind of plastic may have a degree of toxicity okay. to it, yeah. especially if it's not BPA or it doesn't have that triangle um, printed on it. But yeah. normally, like, because I have some plastic containers here like that one, um, I'm not putting my soil in the container. I'm, I'm just keeping the container that I'm getting from this, wherever I purchase the plant from. I leave it in there, and then I sit it inside the container. So it has, yeah, it has, you know, decorative features to it, but without putting it in, you know, the actual plastic containers. Because Plastic is toxic too, mm -hmm. and I don't know to what degree and what products. Because you know, in California, they have Prop 65, and everything. There's so many things. Even a handbag that you can buy at a store, they have to post that it could be toxic to you oh, yeah. through Prop 65. So um, we're not regulated to that degree, to that extreme. But um, depending on if you're pregnant or not pregnant, or if you you know have high sensitivities to certain illnesses or whatever. Plastic can be a problem. Those of you who are dealing with diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, all of those, uh, you know, diseases. Yeah, yeah. This is something great that you can do because you're mm -hmm. out there moving. And as you right. ladies say, you're moving every part of your body pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. And that's the one for folks who are diabetics. If you move after a meal, you had a very, maybe a carbohydrate high meal it will help move that blood, well, it will help move the sugar into your bloodstream mm -hmm. and keep it out of going into, and keep it out of going into your liver right. and you have to urinate it out. You know, right. you want that blood to move into your muscles and move into those tissues and provide energy. So if you, the more you move, the quicker that, um, <laughs> the insulin works and, and the quicker it gets that, sugar into your body <laughs> yeah. yeah instead of just going into the void so you want to keep moving you want to keep moving you want to eat very nutrient dense vegetables yeah let's talk a little bit about and we talked about this too what is what's good to grow right now we're in a uh in south carolina where it really doesn't get that hot uh, I mean, not cold, rather. It's very hot, not that cold. Mm -hmm. So do we have four seasons of growing seasons? Or 
are there just two growing seasons? What are the growing seasons? <coughs> so it's kind of like for South Carolina, we did. We have we mild have weather cold. and we have cold weather and then we have hot. Right. Um, right now we're in the hot yeah. stage. So the good hot um, nature vegetables are our sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. Those are good to go on the ground right now. Sweet potatoes. Uh, um, okra, tomatoes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm thinking. Sweet potato, okra, tomatoes. That's what you can eat. Um, Cucumber. Cucumber. Squash. Corn. Zucchini. Corn. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. Squash, zucchini, corn, cucumber, to, uh, sweet potatoes, tomatoes, all of those are things. Peppers. And peppers that you can grow right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you sow them right now, most likely you'll probably get a yield starting in August. Um, and you'll probably have maybe a month of cuttings from that. And so it will bring you into September, which is our mild months. Um, all right. So you'll right. want to already have in ground starting in August. Um, collards, the leafy greens. Right, exactly. Because what they say, the rule of thumb is, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, you start sowing in February after the last frost is when you really start germinating mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. planting your seeds. And then you have your spring crop and then you'll have a summer crop, um, a fall crop and a winter crop. Mm -hmm. And collards are really considered to be a cold weather. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, crop. Mm -hmm. Crop, yeah. So seedlings or, um, and this is the other thing we talked about, seeds or the little, um, what is it called? Seedlings. Seedlings or seeds. Plant babies. Yeah, plant yeah. babies, which is best. Well, I my first year of gardening, which was two years ago, I spent a lot of money on buying seedlings from a local box store. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this seedlings year, are just a little already yes. kind of, they're, they're already, already starting started. to grow. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This year, I germinated from seeds and I used grow lights. So the cucumber that you see over there came from seed. Um, the tomatoes, I did probably, I don't know, 45 tomato plants from seed. And I germinated them and put them under the grow lights. And when they started getting a little seedling, um, I, trans I started in the egg carton. Mm -hmm. Then I moved them to a larger little pot. And then as they grow, the only downside to doing your own seeds is, is that there's a longer... Um, process of getting them ready mm -hmm. to go in the ground because you have to what they call harden them which means they have to get used to sunlight mm -hmm. you know, that you can have you know indirect sun but before they can go in the ground they need to be able to handle full sun mm -hmm. so so um when you buy a seedling obviously you can just put it right there into yes, the dirt mm -hmm. they've already yeah gone through that process but when you buy a seed let's talk a little bit about what you have to do before you put it in the ground Okay. Or in a container. All right. Well, what I think about when I was in the first grade, when they were showing us how to grow potatoes and, and beans, bean was the first thing that I ever learned how to grow. And basically all I did was is I triple layered paper towel. Mm -hmm. Then I poured the water on the paper towel to saturate the paper towel. Uh -huh. And then I put my seeds place them in there, space them apart on, you, the, trip, on the on wet, the wet on the wet paper towel. Because towel. if you don't do that, then as they start to germinate and grow, the roots start to grow. They'll grow into each other, mm -hmm. and then I place another triple layer of wet paper towel on top and make sure it stayed moist and in a dark place for like ten days. And, and I inside the house, inside mm -hmm. the okay. house, because you want it to be in a warm place. Right can't put it out on the porch if it's still cold outside. Right. But if it is. is warm, can you take it outside? Yes, you can. Okay. You just still has to be in a dark place. Right. Warm, dark place. Mm -hmm. Inside or out. Because you're trying to imitate underground. Underground. Oh, exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. You're trying to imitate under warm, dark place. Yeah. And then from there, I'm telling you, it's just an amazing thing. Just how wonderful it is to know that you put your hands, you touch something and you made it grow from a seed, yeah. you know, and in a, you know, a few more weeks, you'll start to see the fruit on the tomato plants. Mm -hmm. And then in a couple more weeks, you'll be able to pick them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the most wonderful thing. And I have this motto and I don't know if anyone else uses it, but um, you are, well, people say you are what you eat, mm -hmm. but if you eat right, you think right. And if you think right, you live right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really true. You know, we are what we eat, we, what we consume and what we put in our body is a reflection of our health at that given moment. Right. So how do you know after you put your seed, seeds in a warm, dark place, 
how do you know when they're ready? When you just see them sprouting? Yes. Once they start sprouting. And how long a process is that? Gosh, uh, it ten depends days? on. Yeah, ten, ten, ten days. days. It depends okay. on what ten seed it is. Okay. But what you do is you go back and check it periodically because you want to make sure that the towel stays moist. Okay, mm -hmm. right. And, and if not, you need to continue add more water. water. Yeah. Does then, it matter what kind of water? Yes, it does. Do not use bottled water. Okay. There's certain sure. chlorine and things. The water is treated with certain things are not good for plants. Okay. So, because at one point, so I will, tap water. Tap water is okay. the best. Tap Just water. use tap water, not distilled water, not purified water, and not bottled water. Tap water. Now, it's what tap. happens if you get like mold? Like if there's not enough air circulation going on. Well, you, you might get some moldy if you're using dirt to germinate, but with the paper towel method. It, 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 I have not experienced any mold yeah. whatsoever, okay, but right. um, with the whole water situation, um, when you're going back and forth and checking it, you're lifting that paper towel up to mm -hmm. see if they sprouted yet or not. And when you see them sprout, you're going to be really excited. Yeah. And then you transfer them to dirt. Okay. And if we're talking about container gardening, so you just put, how many seeds do you put in a container? I went overboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, one packet of, one packet of seeds is probably 18 to 24 seeds for $2. Let's say that. Then this is hypothetically $2. Well, if you go to a box store, you can pay almost $5 for one seedling. Mm -hmm. So I grew three sets, three packs of tomatoes of different types, 18 of them. So like I said, I went over. How many did you put in each container, though? Did you put all 18 in one. one container? Just one. Oh, okay. You have to, at that point, once they're ready to go into dirt, a dirt container, mm -hmm. one seed per container. One seed per mm -hmm. container. We're talking about container gardening and kind of going over uh, not only some things that we talked about last month, but some new things. I'm Trey Taylor, and um, Isha Curtin you got it. <laughs> joins us from the uh, Richland County Master Gardeners Association. Joy Price also joins us from DHEC SNAP Ed Department. Hello, I'm Carolyn Sawyer, an entrepreneur and caregiver. Part of taking care of your health is knowing if you're at risk of type 2 diabetes. Prediabetes is serious and puts you at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Up to 90% of South Carolinians who have it don't know they have it. Visit inittogethersc.org. Take an online test to find out your risk and join a diabetes prevention program. This message brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of SC. Computers, they're a part of our everyday lives, but when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow? Won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803-351. One, five, Hi, I'm Master Deputy Addie Perez with the Richland County Sheriff's Department Community Action Team. As a mother, I know it's important to take care of my health for those I care about. Part of doing that is knowing my risk for developing type 2 diabetes. So if I was you, I'll take the opportunity to visit inittogethersc.org and take an online test to find out if you have prediabetes. Again, the website is inittogethersc.org. This message is brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. We're back here in front of the DHEC Garden. We were here a couple of months ago when Joy showed us the very beginnings of it. And uh, she joins us again from the DHEC Garden. You can see all of the great uh, stuff that they've gotten from the garden already, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. Uh, Shanae Galloway joins us. She is a master gardener intern. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Let me ask you why you were interested in being a master gardener. Who um, wants to do that? <laughs> uh, well, I'm a bit of a nerd. I was a biology undergrad major and um, just love nature in general. Yeah. Um, but I went on a trip to Italy and came back and was super sad. And so I tried to recreate what I saw in my backyard. So I started with sunflowers and I got an olive wow. tree and grapevines. Wow. And then it just exploded from there. And I met, I went to um, the Sand Hill Market and saw some master gardeners and they gave me a soil sample bag. And so I started digging into it. And then I met another lady who was a master gardener. 
and she told me so much about it and I was like I I want to do this yeah yeah yeah, well thank you so much for joining us good luck on your journey thank you okay so joy Mm -hmm. uh tell us first what you guys planted just just kind of do a wrap um kind of a review of what you planted in in the uh so we have several variations of squash we have butternut squash zucchini squash as well as straight neck yellow squash um, and we also have some tomatoes, two types of those. Um, we have the regular heirloom ones, and then we also I have some of these. Oh yeah, yeah. Those <laughs> right there. and then we have some cherry sun gold ones. So instead oh, of turning yeah, instead of turning uh, a nice red color, they turn a big yellow okay, <laughs> like this. Okay. Okay. Um, and we're also doing some several peppers. So we have some hot peppers, mm-hmm. some jalapeno hot peppers, and, <laughs> and we have some bell peppers. And then we also have eggplant. And then on you're the too young to know that. What? She's no, oh, I'm an old soul. Okay. <laughs> that so got to be older than you. Yep. <laughs> Need a board, ring my bell. Let's do okay. a trivia contest about yeah, when that absolutely. came out. Right. <laughs> ten years? No, ten years before I was born, probably. I don't know. How old were you when we were born? Ninety-five. Oh, girl. Ninety-five. Were you really? Yeah. Jesus. I thought we were the same age, too. No. God, a little bit young. Oh, oh man, you are a baby. And, and okra. Okra. Right. And then okra. 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 And so yeah, we got a good harvest. Um, and we are donating this. This is our second donation to Palmetto Place awesome. over our colonial. Great, great, great. Mm-hmm. So um, our first segment um, for this episode of our In It Together Wellness Wednesday from In It Together and the Diabetes Action Council, we were actually talking with Joy, or mm-hmm. Isha, not Joy, Isha, about um, some soil and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So let's continue that conversation because that's what we're talking about today. Okay, so for in-ground planting, um, a lot of times you want to get a soil test first. Soil test. And this is even if you are planting in your backyard. Right. Okay. Even if you're planting in your backyard, sometimes um, the county will have information on what type of soil you have and um, what you need to put into your soil. Um, so, so what type of soil do you need typically in? It's backyard soil. It does it usually need something? Yes. So a lot of times with backyard soil, you got that top soil, and it doesn't have really a lot of nutrients. Okay. Um. So most of that nutrients is probably a little bit three feet down. Um. And so it's a little bit sandier. It's a little bit clayier, and you don't get a lot of growth from that. Um. So sometimes you add in the things that you need. So with the soil test, well be found out is a pH. Mm-hmm. So whether your soil is acidic, whether your soil is basic, um, and typically soil won't range out of um, seven, go up above a seven, and it won't go below a four. So seven to four, is that where you want your soil, or is that not a good place to have it? It's all dependent upon what you want to Oh, wow. Um, so okay. for if you're doing a basic soil, um, usually a good bit of tomatoes grow there um and, and that's because of nitrogen fixing and that's another reason i'm gonna bring it up <laughs> furthermore um because when it comes to anything in the night shape family so our eggplants our tomatoes mm-hmm. and our peppers those are going to take up a lot of um, nitrogen from the soil so in that soil test they're also going to see how much nitrogen is in your soil going to see the phosphorus levels, the potassium levels, all those little macro, (laughs) right, those big nutrients and little nutrients are going to be told to you in that soil test. So let me stop you here. Mm -hmm. Where do you call, who do you call to get a soil test and does that cost? Okay, yeah, typically (laughs) it does cost since COVID, um, I think the cost went up to $10. Oh, that's not bad. So $10. Yeah. 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 I just want, you know, because people want obviously they're doing this for economical reasons natural reasons so i just want to make sure it is a cost that someone can afford yeah. so ten dollars and then who do you call it? clemson extension clemson extension so you say hey i want to plant a garden in my backyard can you mm-hmm. come out and do a soil test 
Well, actually, you, you do bring the soil to the oh, extension office. Um, okay. If you go to one of the booths, there's uh, little bags that they'll give you. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you can just bring it in a Ziploc bag. Make sure it's sealed and labeled where you got it from. Um, right. You're going to take a couple different samples. If it's a specific garden bed, you just need a couple samples. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. If you're doing your whole yard, a couple different spots in your yard. Um, maybe the four corners, one in the center. Um, put all that in the bag, and then you bring that to the extension office. We'll process it, and then we'll ship it off to Clemson. They do the testing, and then they will email you the results back. If you guys have questions about your results, you can call the extension office um, or the, the lab itself and ask them. Um, but they have a summary of your results. They can tell you what you need based on the results that they gave you. Awesome. In it together, SB and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday. Every Wednesday here on Focus with COVID, I'm Trey Taylor. We're here with Janae Galloway. She is a master gardener intern and joined Christ with DHEC. We have been doing this series, as you can hear, the animals in the background. <laughs> grow at home and uh, we're getting you ready for your at-home garden, uh, getting you ready for what your um, soil needs to be for you to grow. Now you mentioned, Joy, that you need certain types of soil to plant certain types of things. So when you um, go to uh, Clemson with your soil, do you tell them, I want to plant XYZ? And yeah. they'll tell you what your soil is good for? Yeah, and they'll also tell you the amendments you need to add in. Okay, okay. Um, and so, like she was saying, the analysis will detail you on what's missing. Okay. Um, and so, in our garden, um, we added a bit of worm castings. Um, and the worm castings and stuff is just a natural fertilizer um, that kind of adds back in a good bit of nutrients, kind of like the potassium mm -hmm. and the phosphorus. But it doesn't add all the nutrients in, um, I also put down some lime. Lime is going to lower the pH and make it more basic. And I'm trying to figure out. Now, where do you get moss. this? Peat moss, okay. okay. Where do you get this? Do so, you go to a whoa. nursery? Oh, okay. You just go. I go to Lowe's. Okay. I go to Home Depot. So, this any is place stuff. that you can leave. Woodley. Woodley is good. Yeah. Any type yeah. of nursery is good. Okay. Um, we don't endorse any specifics to it. Yeah. Yeah. No endorsement. Someone from... is talking off camera like she's the voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not sponsored or anything, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. But just this go to any nursery. Wherever you can get your soil, you right. can also get the nutrients to put yeah. back into the soil. Right. right. Okay. All right. And again, Clemson will let you know you need X, Y, Z. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Right. And then for plants and whatnot, some typically when you get your stuff from the big um, corporate places, <laughs> they won't necessarily have all of the additives you need in there. When you go to nurseries, they'll make sure you have enough food and nutrients for your plant to last six months. Oh, that's good. Out of purchase. So you would suggest maybe a nursery because a nursery Nourish. specializes <laughs> yeah. in, in, yeah. in plants. You know, a nursery would probably be your better bet yes. to get your nutrients. Okay. Mm -hmm. Provide some of the all-in-one um, fertilizers and amendments, and then they have yes. some of the individual, um, like just phosphorus or just right. the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. right. So you can pick and choose what you need, or you can get an all-in-one if that's easier. Awesome, right. awesome. All right, so we've got our soil tested. We find out what we need in our soil. We've mm -hmm. gone to the nursery. We've got what we need. What do we do next? <laughs> we plant. We plant. <laughs> yeah. um, so once we plant everything. You probably see um, in the area the different type of animals that may come up yeah. or the different type of insects that may come up. So you might have an ant problem in your yard. Mm. And you might have... And that's not good. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay? It's okay because ants are pollinators. So okay. they are friends. Um, ants are your friends. <laughs> now the black ants or the red ants, or does it matter? Well, I mean, oh, fire ants is a little different. Fire, <laughs> fire ants. <laughs> <laughs> but the fur is typically do like our yeah. vegetable okay. gardens. Okay. So you, it's a part of the it's a part of the landscape. Okay. Um, We're in their world. Yes, we are. We are. <laughs> right. And sometimes with ants you just gotta dust them off. But um ants are good. So we wanna keep them in the garden because with our squashes and whatnot, they do not self pollinate. They need <laughs> Well, I wanna ask you two questions right here. When we are making a decision as to where to plant in our garden based on what our soil looks like, mm -hmm. where does the sun need to be? Does the sun need to be going toward the garden or away from the garden? I'll tell you because uh, we've got a garden in my community mm -hmm. and, and this, I've got more sun in my backyard. Mm -hmm.
my mm -hmm. girlfriend across the street. Right. So the, the garden's in my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So obviously you need to be in a sunny area. Yeah. Well, some plants will need full sun, like our tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Or okay. those okay, that are in the But then there are typically some that doesn't need a lot of shade. So usually the lettuce variety, the leafy variety, mm -hmm. varieties, they are not going to need as much sun. Okay. Um, and then also you don't want to do lettuce too late into a year, yeah. you know, not going to be typically. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to sun all throughout, you want the sun to be able to rise mm -hmm. and then fall in your garden and still have sun. Right. Um, if you want, if you have the full sun plants. So if usually the sun rises in the east, in the normal world, in the normal world um, if you live in a different dimension, All right? Um, and so you're gonna want to place your garden kind of like as a compass, mm -hmm. where it basically has full coverage from east to west. Okay. All right. Great. Great. Joy Price and Shanae uh, Callaway join us. I'm Trey Taylor. In it together, SC and the Diabetes Action Council present Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. We've been talking about grow at home, giving you ways and examples uh, for and tips and information for you to grow your own garden. All right. So we're planting and what do you plant when? Like some things you plant in the summer, some so what right now, two days into summer, do we <laughs> two days into summer. So okra. And it's been a uh, hundred degrees for a whole week. A whole, <laughs> yeah. a whole right. month feels like yeah. um so typically in the summertime you're gonna wanna put some eggplants in the ground. You wanna put tomatoes or crown cherries, okay. um, okra, all your peppers, but also as we're heading into July, you want to start indoors with your lettuce varieties okay. and your kale varieties. All right, so indoor, and of course, we talked about um, earlier with Isha, we can do seedlings. Mm -hmm. uh, so inside, go ahead and do your kale, your lettuce, but outside, you can do... Outside, you can do eggplant, right, eggplant. Tomato, tomatoes, okra, squash. squash. Yeah. Um, right now. Mm -hmm. I think... I think that's it. Sunflowers also oh, do yeah. really oh, sunflowers. Yeah. Yes, marigolds. Yeah, a lot of the annuals you can go ahead and put in the ground now, the ones that are being sold in big box stores and nurseries, mm -hmm. um, those are good for now. Um, and then anything that is not really good for hot, hot time, but if you have a shady area, it will be okay. I still have um, pansies and um, violas oh, okay. um, right under my deck. And so because it's shaded and I have sunflowers on top of that and they provide a lot of shade, they're still doing fine and still pretty green. So. Well, you make a great point because I know, uh, again, when we worked on my garden, we, there was, we, got, we had two beds and then we had flowers in the middle for pollination. Right. So is that important? Do you need to have a flower bed someplace around where your plants are? So, yeah. 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 It's, helpful. That's it's helpful. very helpful. Like with sunflowers, sunflowers are um, they attract all the pollinators. Really? Right. Okay. Oh, yes. They attract every single one of them, but they also attract things that eat aphids. Mm -hmm. um, what does that mean? Nobody knows who eats aphids. aphids is. <laughs> so aphids <laughs> is the worst pest uh, okay. for your garden. And they are what? They're little bugs that eat. Oh, so it's actually a, a, a insect called yeah. call an aphid. 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 Or is it a family of insects? Uh, no, it's, no, the it's, aphid is the specific species, but it okay. is, does fall under another family. Okay, yeah. that's, um, all right. They are sap suckers. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to be around a sap sucker, no. whether it's an insect or a person. By any means. <laughs> I digress, though. So. Yeah. Um, and, and so the birds will come and peck away at the aphids that are on the plants. So with the tomatoes, aphids love tomato leaves. They love any peppers. They love everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your roses. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. And you want to get them out if you physically can go in and pick them out. You can do so. But typically they'll have little eggs on your um, plant. Okay. See that? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. yeah. But they're yeah. little black little <laughs> yeah, um mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. little black eggs on there, mm -hmm. and they typically will hatch their larvae and so the little larvae will go around and eat everything mm -hmm. along with the mommy aphids and they will eat as well so well i want to come back um maybe next month or another month and do 
a segment on how to control pests in your garden. Thank you so much for joining us for the award-winning Coping with COVID and Coping with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. Listen, if you have a story or initiative that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email booking at copingwithtraytaylor.com. If you have a product or service that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. Our other sponsors Sponsors include Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall, Palmetto Media Connections, the Comet Bus System, Agape Counseling and Training Services, and Black Pages, Black Expo. Listen, as always, we leave you with a reading. We've been reading this year, Conversations with God from Cheryl Mims Williams. This is a great book that includes some of her journal writings and some of her, um, some scriptural readings. This chapter is called Thank You. And I'm just going to read some things that we can thank God for just throughout the day. Thank you for your strength in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for opening my heart and mind to your word. Thank you for listening ears that I might hear every word you speak. Thank you for clarity on my mission, my ministry, and my calling. Thank you for making my load and burden lighter. Thank you because you have fallen and doesn't mean that you are a failure. These are things we can just thank God for throughout the day. Have you ever thought about just taking the time, maybe once an hour, starting the hour with, God, I thank you for dot, 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 whatever. That'll make your day go so much better. You make our day here at uh, Coping and Taylor May Productions so much better. We appreciate you watching and for listening and for supporting and for commenting and for liking and for posting and for sharing. We appreciate you. All right. Until the next time, I wish you peace and abundant blessings. Take care. God bless. Stay well. And don't forget to wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. We'll see you soon. Promoting learning what you can do Six ways to a better you